If you're interested in FIFA Mobile, I currently have a second channel where we run a FIFA Mobile Road to Glory, link down below. And if you need any coins for Ultimate Team to get a head start on the game, head to the link in the description, use the code TVM for a discount at checkout. What is going on guys, TVM here, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Road to Glory on a Wednesday, not something that we normally do Tuesday, Wednesdays, but it is draft day again. I have two drafts to show you today. They are... I'm going to obviously have sped them up and I would normally have done them live, but I've been sort of picking the team uh, or doing the draft, I should say. And then before I play the games, I'll just do this quickly. And then when I have time, I'll play the games. So rather than do it live, I just did it when I had time to do it, if that makes sense. So uh, I'm not trying to be adventurous with the teams. I'm not trying to pick players I don't normally use. If there's an option to pick someone that I know I'm going to like. Rashford, for example, uh, or Bruno Fernandes, I'm going to take them because I know I like them. Fred is the same. So I do, I mean, okay, I could probably be better at choosing certain players. I, I normally uh, make a couple of mistakes here or there, but, you know, it's just one of those things. Can't do an awful lot about it. Yesterday's episode uh, showed you, um, spoiler alert if you haven't already seen it, of course, but why would you be watching this if you haven't seen the other video. Uh, we went into the draft with a team that I built in the very first week, which was a shocking team. Lewandowski and Harry Kane up front, both normal versions. I think we had one special card in the entire side. Didn't know what to do here, by the way. Ended up picking Edda Militao. Maybe should have taken Klosterman, but I took Alderweireld, where I should have maybe taken um, someone like Alaba beforehand. But obviously, hindsight's a wonderful thing. You just don't know. And then I could have had Pavard and everything would have been hunky-dory. But in the end, we end up going for the midfielder, which is Zhao Medinho. But uh, in yesterday's video, yeah, that that, um, that draft we went in with was awful. But we managed to get to the final, which made me feel really good about myself, actually. It made me feel like I'm maybe not as, as bad a player as I thought I was. Like, I didn't think I was bad. I just didn't think I was that good. Uh, I feel like I'm actually not bad at all at this game, especially with... Um, five-star skillers in particular because I use elasticos like they're going out of fashion and I'm getting better at doing them so I try and include as many five-star skillers into this team as I possibly can uh, not like overdoing it and sacrificing uh, quality and, and chemistry just to get them in there but um, you know we've got Quadrado on the bench uh, we'll, we've got uh, Promes there as well Harry Kane was a perfect choice to go up alongside Rashford uh, we could have put Deli Ali in there. Now we all of a sudden have Neymar, Mbappe and Cuadrado with Promes on the bench to be able to bring on, which is always nice. I had a big defensive issue here. Um, it wasn't giving me good defenders. We don't have good defenders and I'm lacking a little bit in chem. I had that Henderson option three times and I wish, I wish I'd taken it because that would have solved uh, quite a big problem for me, which was chemistry to the center back so that I could have used maybe Quadrado at right back or something but in the end I pass up on him three times and end up having a bit of a not a crisis but yeah uh, we've got uh, Bernadeschi there as an option five star skills that's why I uh, m make a point of it um, Kudos is there uh, Kudos is there sorry as well links to Promes I went for Bernadeschi not that it was ever going to you know, he was ever going to get into the team. And that is the squad that we end up with. Not the best of size. The defence in itself is absolutely horrendous. Not enough pace in the centre-backs at all, despite the shadow on Alderweireld. The goalkeeper is questionable. And when you come up against players like Kevin De Bruyne, now this guy's got Nedved as a centre-back. And I don't recall him actually changing that. Maybe he did, but I don't think he did. I'm not sure. Either way... Turns out Harry Kane's rule breaker card is actually really nice, despite the fact that he doesn't have skills, which is obviously something that I love in this game. But still, definitely something that you can get by without. Uh, just a quick note again, I've tried uh, the EA draft token system where you actually go in and say, hey, I got disconnected from a game. Uh, can I have a draft token, please? Uh, that system is down and it's been down for two or three days now. I've given up all hope of getting that um, that token back. Don't. It's gone. You know, it is what it is. It's EA. They screw you over at any given opportunity. And there it is. So first game of a new draft, we win 3-0. And I know we're up against, or we can come up against anyone. You know, there could be a Division 10 player. 
or you could be playing against a Division 1 player, which I'm 100% certain we hit in the second draft. But um, I feel really, really good about myself in-game. Now, it's a little bit different in certain scenarios. So, for example, in the draft, I know that one defeat means that I'm out. But at the end of the day, I know I can go straight back in and have another go. So it's not the end of the world. When it comes to things like Weekend League, I know that if I lose one, it means I have one less game to hit the rank that I want. In Rivals, it means if I lose one, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to get rank one. It just means I have to play more games in order to get the rank that I want. But the difference between Draft and any other mode, really, is that if you make a mistake and you get knocked out, I can always start again. And that is not something you can do in Rivals and Weekend League instantly. You have to wait until the next week to, in order to do it, right? And there's no time limit on draft. You know, if I want to stop after one game and complete the rest next month, I can. Which is something that I really like about it. So there's almost like no pressure on me here. I don't, I mean, I get nervous in finals because I don't win the draft very often. And I really want those 225k packs. Uh, what a goal that is from Rashford, by the way. I would love somehow not going to happen because it just can't. But I would love to be able to get Rashford into uh, our weekend league team. But we go into the semi-finals of, uh, of the draft against what is a decent looking team. Uh, it's not bad. The I can't remember. Yeah, I make a mistake there. Threw the ball out. It doesn't go where you want it to go. It doesn't have the legs. He intercepts it. Comes back and he scores. I'm thinking, wow, am I really going to lose this game against a guy that I've literally given the goal to? Uh, and fortunately, we managed to make it one all. And then we play a really good ball up the line. This guy has been holding the ball in the midfield for the majority of the game. If I remember, if it's the guy I'm thinking it is, got that ball across there. I mean, he's just, he's in space and you've got to play it across there. And again, in the 80th, ball down the left-hand side. Ziek does really well, lifts the ball over. Get a little bit of luck there, won't lie to you. Another five-star skiller, though, so we can do whatever we want with him. We're using the R1 dribble, play it into Mbappe, and it's a nice, comfortable finish to make it 3-1. My opponent's had enough. When you look at the stats, you'll think that he absolutely ruined me. And even though he did possess... Oh, no, he didn't. I'm lying. Wrong game. <laughs> maybe it's the... It's not the next game. Maybe maybe it was a game we've already played. Either way, some people you play will hold the ball constantly in the midfield and they just go back and forth. They now and again go forward. Maybe they have a shot from distance or something. And it looks like they've dominated the game. And they don't really do anything. This guy in the final, unfortunately, was just too good. Um, there, there was an element of me being able to come back into the game. But as soon as I went 2-0 down, I threw a little bit too much forward. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't have enough in me to come back and win the game. I don't yeah I think I was just I was making such stupid mistakes toward the end like at 3 nil down I knew I'd lost I knew he, he'd bested me and there wasn't an awful lot I could do so he manages to uh, to get four and then that just sums up the entire game really outrageous uh, to be fair he he was so much better than I was there was nothing I could do about it he was a better player his team was better it is what it is but that's okay because I've lost in the final but it doesn't matter because if I really want to go in again I can go in again uh, we pick up a 25k pack, a jumbo goal pack, and a goal players pack, which is better than what we got for losing in the final or being disconnected in the final yesterday, which was uh, which was nice. So it means that I think we get was it? Did we get a 25k pack? It was a different 25k pack. It was like a premium players pack, but um, I think we got a goal players pack. So in this one, we got a free jumbo pack essentially. I think that was the difference. Unfortunately. Uh, I've done three drafts this year. You're about to see the third and the second. I'm not. I do, I'm not going to show you the whole thing though, because otherwise we'll be here till like 20, 25 minutes, and it's basically just me building another draft. And there's only so much draft you can take. We won't do another one now, probably till Tuesday, because there's obviously rewards tomorrow. I, I was a little bit not confused, but I, I just thought something that wasn't right. So I thought that um, row to the final cards left packs yesterday um where they don't they actually leave packs at six o'clock on friday so we will be opening all the rewards tomorrow uh, that was the draft that i built the third time around so this is the second draft of the episode my third draft of the year i, I you know will continue to do drafts because I, I do quite like them so i will show you like draft stats and stuff like that with the next time we do one so that you can see how many we've entered and because sometimes I will do them and not show you because maybe maybe I'll do one today. 
I don't know whether it'll still be relevant then next week. But um, weak goalkeeper, unfortunately. But And it's a bit boring because it's full La Liga. But we just didn't have the option to go anyone else. And we do have a little bit of a Lionel Messi situation going on. I was taking Luis Suarez off very early on and replacing him with Sancho, which doesn't have pace, but he has skills. And I like that. This is the semi-final. And this guy was incredible. He moved on the ball like Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dance. And if you are too young to know who that is, I mean... I don't know what to tell you, really. That was a bit unfortunate there where my defender literally stopped the ball from going out of play. He kind of, like, nudged it and it slowed right down. And then he scored a second. I gave up at 2-0 at uh, 20 minutes down. Uh, 20 minutes down, 20 minutes in, 2-0 down. Then went 3-0 down, 22 minutes in. And it was gone. I honestly, I was, I nearly quit on the third goal. And I thought, no, I'll, I'll give it another go. I'll see what happens. And I was playing as well as I normally do. It's just this guy was so much better than I was. And at the fourth, I thought, you know what? I'm wasting my time. I'm not going to beat him. He's too good. Beat the first guy 4-1. Second game went into penalties. We managed to win that. That guy was a very good player. The guy that um, the game went into penalties for. He went 3-1 up, I think, at one point. And we came back to 3-3 or something like that. It was one of those type of games. We beat him on penalties. Quite fortunate to do so. Uh, then went into the semis and... Just got beaten by a better player. I'm not going to sit here and blame the game and, oh, the, the game's changed, it's been patched, and that's why I lose games now. I just wasn't good enough. Uh, simple as that. We picked uh, up Odegaard. We have one already. Uh, and speaking of which, we have another one. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is, of course, uh, I've changed my team for Weekend League. Only by one player, and it is subject to more change because if they drop Icon SPCs on Friday... You bet your bottom dollar if there's one there that even remotely fits, we are going to complete it instantly. However, we have to wait for rewards. We're going to have to wait till Friday to find out. This is what the team is going to look like at the moment going into the weekend. Quadrado plays at right back instead of Semedo this weekend. Bernat is coming in instead of Mendy. Why? Is he better? No, but it's because Odegaard is going to replace Ocampos. And Ocampos was decent, but Odegaard... Udegaard, Udegaard, no idea. He has five-star skills, and he is much better suited to being a midfielder. He's not, I, I don't think he's as good as Ocampos in that role, but I'm going to try, I mean, I've already played with him in a couple of games of Rivals, and he's good, and I like him a lot, and having someone who can do five-star skills in the midfield is just fun, so why not, right? And that was, uh, that's a bought player, of course. Everyone else is first owner. He was, I think, 26,000 coins, which is a fraction of the price of Ocampos. 140-odd thousand coins he cost. And in fact, I think he was 170k when I first bought him. Sold for, sold for 140, so I've lost a little bit of money there. But that's going to be the team going into the weekend league. Unless we pack something insane, unless we get an incredible red pick, or if they bring out Icon SBCs, uh, on Friday. Now, something else worth noting here. Um, where is it? it there's, there's a big thing going on with... Let me just... I'll tell you what. Let me just click the actual... I think you probably know what I'm going to talk about, but we might as well go over and have a look. And it is, of course, David Beckham back in FIFA. Now, we knew this anyway, right? This was leaked. Uh, he was... In the re most recent update, he was searchable in Ultimate Team... Three versions of the card, three different pictures, three different ratings. EA seem to have uh, forgotten people can search up people's names in Ultimate Team because right at the bottom here, it will give us information about the icons. It's a bit stupid, but the, the most important thing to note here for me personally, and I, I clocked it straight away and I was, in, I was in shock, and I still don't understand how they've done it. If we scroll down, this right here is unreal. I am so excited for this. You you don't even you don't even know. And it's not because I want that 86 card. Even though we are going to get it, the the criteria for getting that David Beckham card is to play a, play FIFA between the 14th of December I think it is and the 15th of January. So if you play it within that month, you are getting this item untradeable dropped in your account. There isn't any indication as to whether you'll get it on the 15th or whether you, or the 15th of December. There you go. There's a, there's a line of text right there. So it says, play FIFA 21 by January the 15th, 2021, and starting December the 15th, 
you'll receive an untradeable, one-of-a-kind David Beckham item to add to your dream squad in foot. Celebrating the legendary English midfielder La Liga debut for Real Madrid on the uh, third and fourth, uh, yeah, you know what I mean, 03, 04 season. That, and then there's, obviously, you get him in Volta as well because, uh, you know, three people play that and they've got to keep those people happy. But there's so many... There's so many things going around in my mind there. A, I don't know whether we're going to get on the 15th, whether they drop it after on uh, you know January the 16th, 17th, whatever, when they calculate how many people have played the game. Or is it a case of you play the game and instantly they go, right, you've unlocked it, bang, it's there, you can use it. Everyone is going to get this card. By the time it's released, if you have to wait until the 15th of December and they drop it as soon as you play the game, it might still be usable for most people. If you have to wait till January... It's not usable anymore. Moment's gone. However, it's not the card in particular that I actually really care about. Have a look at the the the, the team. This is an icon, essentially, right? David Beckham has retired years ago. And he is an icon returning to the game. The, yes, okay, this isn't an icon card, but still. He has a Real Madrid badge there. And they are literally saying, celebrate the 3 4 season in which he played for Real Madrid. So... EA have now somehow worked out a way to get the sort of, I don't know, icon players with their one of the teams they played for because obviously he didn't end his career at Madrid. This was just 03 04. He moved on and I think he played for Milan and PSG after this and he played for LA Galaxy after this. So that is big news, really, because you could think, well, they could bring out a, a Thierry Henry for Arsenal, they could bring him out for Barcelona, they could do whatever they want. Yari Lippmann has played for nearly every club in Europe. They could bring out any which way they want of him. Why does that matter? I mean, I don't suppose it really does in a way, but it is interesting that they can do this now. So maybe they do bring out a version of Yari Lippmann that is an Ajax or a Liverpool player. And, and they put him in an SBC and you've got to weigh up whether you want to go and buy the full icon that links to everyone or whether you're happy to just pick up one that only links to Liverpool or Ajax players. There's so many different things they can do with this and of course these aren't actual icon cards they could bring them out as SBCs as milestones or whatever at the very bottom of this page they have this return of an icon David Beckham joins the squad of icons in foot 21 on December the 4th see his icon ratings on November 27th if you want to see his icon ratings go into the game and search him in concepts or in the, on the market or something He's not going to be there. You can't look at the in-games, but you can look at the ratings of the cards. EA are quite literally idiots. I don't know why they don't... I mean, we've got to wait. Maybe there's a legal... But there can't be a legal reason. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put it... They've broken rules by putting them in the code if there was a legal reason why they can't show us the... I don't know. Whatever. Either way, this is stupid. Although, the fact that they're coming into the game on December 4th, which is roughly when Icon Swaps is meant to start, it's quite interesting. It will be a little bit stupid, though, if they decide to bring Icon Swaps out. Put David Beckham in it and then you are working for that David Beckham knowing full well that you can get this guy a week later. He's going to be worse than the other cards by the way. The other David Beckham cards are going to be 87, 89. Is it 87, 89, 92? I think. I can't remember. I did a video on him and I still can't remember. But either way, David Beckham coming to FIFA. We are going to get a free card. He That actually fits my team for the most part. It gets a link to Messi. He's going to be off chem, but he plays as a secondary CM. That is better than Martin Odegaard. He doesn't have the skills. He is three-star, three-star. But his free kicks are going to be monumental. I don't think it's a card that anyone is really going to use by the time we get it. However, David Beckham is one of my favorite players of all time. So you bet your bottom dollar that I am going to go for him if they drop him as an SBC, if they put him in swaps, or... If I can't get any of them, but they drop this card in my account, you bet your ass I'm going to use him. I am going to put him there at right wing, and we are going to use David Beckham as a secondary CM alongside Fabinho or any other player that we have at the time. I'm looking forward to it. Big fan of this Real Madrid badge right here as well. Hopefully, they bring out... I mean, they could bring out a Man United version. They could bring out a, a PSG version. Why does it matter? I just like it. I, I just think it's exciting. They could do an awful lot with this type of thing. Let me know what you think of it in the comments section down below. If you have enjoyed today's episode and you are excited for rewards tomorrow, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for new, and until the next time, goodbye. Join the betting rebellion and find out what your football knowledge is really worth. 